Only here at the cinema. Welcome back to my movie night show. Last time we had a Night of the Demon triple feature, so let's talk about it. Started with the Dana Andrews British horror classic, Night of the Demon, released in America under the title Curse of the Demon. And uh, the cover of this DVD is a little misleading because it says Curse of the Demon and Night of the Demon, double feature! They're the same movie! You can't say it's a double feature! Night of the Demon, I believe, is like eight minutes longer than the American cut, Curse of the Demon. Um, offhand, I couldn't tell you wh what was in either version. I believe I originally saw Curse of the Demon, and this was my first time watching Night of the Demon, the uncut version. But, uh... I don't know what the difference is. I th There's like a Halloween party the bad guy has that I don't think was in the original, but it's been like two or three years since I've seen the American cut. So we'll talk about what's in the British cut. So Night of the Demon tells the story of fedora-wearing rational skeptic John Holden, who doesn't believe in magic or demonology or any of that. Um... And he's come to town for this big skeptic convention where they talk about magic doesn't exist and how, like, the occult can affect people's minds. Um, and he finds that the professor he was set to, like, work with um, has died mysteriously. Um, maybe not that mysteriously. I think he got, like, hit by a car or something, but... People think there was, like, a demon involved, because he, he had gotten involved with, uh, the villain of the movie, whose name escapes me. It's not, it's not on the back here, but it does have the run times. It's 95 minutes for the British release, 82 minutes for the American release. So that's, like, 12 minutes, 13 minutes, actually. I can math. 13 minutes got cut from American releases. I wonder why. America's not nearly as sensitive as Britain, and probably it was just, it's America, our, ten, our attention spans aren't that long, give the Americans the shorter version, because they want to sit through a shorter movie. Julian Carswell. Julian Carswell is the, uh, devil-worshipping magician that, uh, that the dead professor got involved with before his death, and now Dana Andrews is engaged with a big part of the plot is like there's there's this like secret if you write these runes on parchment paper and then hand the parchment paper off to someone else without them noticing uh then they get killed by a demon in like eight days i forget what the time frame on that is but you once you've gotten the runes it's it's like eight days before you uh, you get killed by a demon, unless you can pass the parchment paper on to someone else without them noticing. Which uh, I'm realizing now, very similar to the plot of The Ring. <laughs> uh, wonder how much The Ring was inspired by Night of the Demon. Might be pure coincidence. Might not have been inspired by Night of the Demon at all, but. That, that is pretty strong overlap between those two stories. So, of course, uh, you know, it's Dana Andrews, he doesn't believe this whole thing, but he meets up with, like, the dead professor's daughter, and she starts to believe some of the stuff, and they, they talk to, like, all these magicians. He even talks a lot with the villain of the movie, and, uh... At some point, he becomes... Kind of convinced that maybe this parchment paper will do something. So he, you know, he's got to, like, pass it off. Get rid of it. It's it's a great little movie with a few kind of unfortunate scenes. The demon doesn't look great. It's on the cover here, isn't he? Well, 
It's kind of blurry on the cover. He, he looks okay on the cover. In the movie, the demon does not look great. And the director of the film deliberately did not show the demon on screen. He, was, he did that on purpose. He didn't want to show the demon. And I think that probably would have helped the story a little bit too. Because if you cut out the shots of the demon, you can sort of read it as ambiguous whether or not this demon is actually killing people. So, you know, a little bit of like a mind fuck, like, ooh, is the demon real or is it all a coincidence? But no, they, they just show you the demon. The, the studio brought someone else in to direct the scenes with the demon. The director of this film has, like, said on record, he's like, I directed none of the scenes with the demon in them. <laughs> so, <laughs> hard, hard to fault the movie on that. Um, studio meddling, it sucks. Maybe that's what got cut out of the American cut. Maybe the American cut doesn't have the demon. Probably it does, but that would make for a better cut of the film. Just, just cut all the shots where you actually see the demon out. Because it's not a very convincing demon, and it kind of ruins the setup of the movie. But it, it's fun. It's a fun movie. Very enjoyable. Very, um, you know, a little creepy. But, um, a great example of, like, early satanic horror. I, I think this had a big influence on, like, the films of the 60s and 70s, because... Satanic horror was not super popular in the early days of of movies. There was sort of like an underlying satanic implication to a lot of stuff like like Dracula, they're like you know, he's afraid of crosses and stuff, so there's like a little satanic thing. And even in like The Wolfman, there's like a a pentagram that indicates who is and isn't a wolfman. So there's, like, satanic themes in those early movies, but very few overtly satanic horror films. And as time goes on, you see more and more of them. And this is one of the earliest. Not the earliest, not by any means. You, I mean, like, you go way back. You had Haxon and Faust... Back in, like, the 20s. But this came, like, right before the 60s. And there was a lot, there was a lot more satanic horror in the 60s and 70s than the 50s. When was this? 53? Uh, 57. Ooh. Ooh. So almost the 70s, even. Or it's almost the 60s, even. I'm smart. I can math. I don't know, really enjoyable film, uh, really well made, um, I, I, comes highly recommended by me, it's one of those classic horror movies, you know, um, it played in America, and maybe even Britain, but at least in America, on a double bill with the Hammer Horror feature, Curse of Frankenstein. Which is probably why the name got changed to Curse of the Demon. So, those two kind of go together. Curse of Frankenstein, Curse of the Demon. Um, if you're going to watch it, I would recommend the Night of the Demon version. Just because I don't know what's cut out of the American version. But yeah, that's uh, Night of the Demon from 1957. The, the second film we've watched so far that was... Uh, Referenced in the opening song of Rocky Horror Picture Show. Definitely the weirdest reference in that song. Because the, the line is something like... Dana Andrews said prunes gave him the runes. And it's like, there's no prunes in this movie. What are you talking about? You're stretching for a rhyme. This is not even a science fiction movie. Why are you referencing Night of the Demon? It's, it's the weirdest reference in that song. I don't get it. They don't even say the name of the movie, so. But, you know, for, for people keeping score at home, waiting for us to watch all of the science fiction double feature movies, that's two down. We got Tarantula, and now we got Night of the Demon. 
Up next, we watched the 1988 uh, horror film Night of the Demons, plural. Um, I double-checked between last time and this time. The 2009 Night of the Demons movie is a bit of a remake of this. It's it's supposed to be a remake. I don't know how close it's stuck. I still haven't watched it, but it is supposed to be a remake of this movie. Got this nice uh, shout fa or scream factory, I guess, steel box release of this. And it's like, but why? Why do I need a steel book of Night of the Demons of all fucking movies? Um, Night of the Demons is a pretty par for the course, um, 80s horror movie. Like, it's, it's just about what you'd expect from an 80s horror movie. <laughs> And like like one of like the mediocre eighties horror movies. Um, these kids go out. It's Halloween. That's uh this movie and this movie. This doesn't take place on Halloween, but it takes place in October because one of the characters mentions having a Halloween party, but uh they say throughout the film. The day the professor is destined to die is the 28th. So, still a few days before the end of October. Um, this one takes place on Halloween. These kids go out to this haunted house. And they do a seance. And it awakens this demon. And the demon kills most of them. Not all of them. But most of them. The black dude survives. Like to throw that one out there. <laughs> I talked a few episodes ago about how, like, like, the black guy always dies first trope. It's not true. The black guy does not always die first, but he almost always dies. But what do you know? He lived in this one. Good for him. Proud of you. Good job. You did it. Congrats. It's, it's one of those weird movies that sort of crosses the lines between demons and zombies. Because, like, one girl gets possessed... And she's, like, a demon, but then she, like, kills the other people. But as the other people die, they also become demons. So, in this one, it leans a little more demon, but there are other movies where it's like, Oh, it's demons! And it's like, this is just zombies. What's the difference between a, th these things and zombies? Why are you calling them demons and not zombies? This This one leans a little more towards demons. There are a lot of incidental overlaps between this and the 1956 Night of the Demon. I don't think it was deliberate, but there's a lot of... I mean, first off, they take place around Halloween. Um, in both movies, we see the demon appear in, like, this big puff of smoke. Looks, uh, you know, very similar effect in both movies. Um... There are a few other minor things I noticed. But the thing this really reminds me of is Ghoulies 2. No, Ghoulies 1. Excuse me. Ghoulies 1, uh, which I showed pretty early on in this series. Because they're both like, hey, we're let's have a party in this creepy house. But a bunch of college kids like, yeah, party time in the creepy house. And then one of them's like, you know what we should do for fun? Let's have a ritual. Let's do witchcraft for fun. Were kids just doing witchcraft for fun in the 80s? I guess, hmm, come to think of it, there was the satanic panic and like all these parents are like, oh, our kids are going out and doing witchcraft, which wasn't a real thing. No one was doing that. But, like, guess it made for some decent horror content. Like, oh yeah, kids are totally going out and doing rituals. Look, it's in Ghoulies and Night of the Demons. And then, you know, slowly through the movie, all of the people in the house get killed off because of the ritual. So, yeah, rem reminds me a bit of Ghoulies. So, there's a scene in this movie where... Two kids are, like, in a coffin having sex. And 
one of them's like, oh, ow, hold on, I don't bend that way. But you can see both of them, and they're not moving. It's just, you know, like the guys in the coffin, girls on top of them, and they're just, like, not moving. N not even, like, an up and down. They're, they're just perfectly still. And she's like, oh, ow, quit moving me around like that. And it's like, clearly this is some line that was probably meant to be, like, kinda off-screen. Like, like, you see the camera pulling up on the coffin, and you can, like, maybe see the top of her head over the coffin, so you know, like, oh, okay, they're having sex in the coffin. But no, you can just, like, see them. You can see straight into the coffin, and you can see that they are not moving. <laughs> like, th that's this needed some editing. You should have had a different shot when that line happened. I don't have that much to say about Night of the Demons. I, uh... I bought this kind of thinking, because I, I had kind of seen it listed as, like, a metal horror movie. So I bought this, like, oh, maybe it'll be, like, worthwhile to review for Metal Ween. And while I think I could probably make a decent review out of this, it's not that metal. Like, it, it it's not metal enough for me to feel like I could show it on Metal Ween. At least not not for like a long time. There are cause there are so many fucking metal horror movies, dude. You have no idea. I could I could change my show to be about exclusively metal horror movies, and I would still be good for like a hundred episodes. But like I I feel like I'd have to be a little desperate to pull out Night of the Demons as a metal horror movie because they do they play a little metal horror a little metal music in the movie um there's even like one of the characters has an exodus bumper sticker which as far as metal bands go exodus is a bit of a deep cut at least today maybe they were more popular in the 80s i don't know but uh probably will not be a metal ween movie anytime soon although i, w I will openly admit <laughs> I decided to do the Night of the Demon triple feature right at the end of September so that when the episode comes out, the episode, it's like October 2nd, the day this is coming out. I don't know why I looked over at my calendar as if it's December, uh, October 2nd today. This video won't come out for another week. It'll be October 2nd when this comes out. So right in the middle of Metal Ween. Middle of beginning of Metal Ween. And so I picked this triple feature because it kind of overlaps with Metal Ween. Not enough that I could show it during Metal Ween, but enough that I could talk about it during Metal Ween. So the final film we watched is a shot-on-video horror film from 1980, although it's possible it didn't release till 83. I s I on IMDb, it's listed as 1980. The copyright date is 1980, but Wikipedia says it's from 83, and it's possible this just sat on a shelf for a couple of years. It is a shot on video horror film, so... Um, Night of the Demons is a movie... Ab excuse me. Night of the Demon, singular, is a movie about Bigfoot. This, this professor takes five college students into the woods to study Bigfoot, and they find there's, like, a cult of locals who worship Bigfoot, and, like, this crazy old man who says that Bigfoot is a demon sent to curse these lands, but the, the people think he's, like, their protector, he's protecting the land from outsiders... So there's a reason you would call it it's Night of the Demon, but it, it almost makes sense for it to, to, to call it Night of the Demon. But it's a Bigfoot movie. Why would you call your Bigfoot movie Night of the Demon? Like, if you gave me a thousand guesses on, okay, there's a movie called Night of the Demon, what is it about? I might guess the 1957 film. I might guess the 90, or the 88 film. I would never guess a Bigfoot movie. 
this movie's a little half and half for me. It's like 50% really boring, nothing happening, and 50% insane bullshit that makes up for the other 50%. And frankly, it might be like 60 nothing happening, 40 insane bullshit. Like, the, the nothing might outweigh the the insane bullshit. But it's worth it for the insane bullshit. Because holy shit, this movie goes off the rails. <laughs> Has to be seen to be believed. Um, for some reason, they really don't want to kill off the main characters in this movie. There's the, there's the professor and his five students... And at the beginning of the film, the professor is in the hospital, and his five students are missing. So you're like, okay, all five of them died, he lived, we know where this is going. But they won't kill off any of the students. Four of them make it to the climax unharmed. <laughs> but throughout the movie, they'll get to a place and the professor will be like, there's a story about people who got killed by Bigfoot here. And then it'll show us a flashback to Bigfoot killing some random people we've never seen before. In increasingly goofy ways. It's always goofy every single time it happens. Oh my god, the deaths in this film are so amazing. Uh, there's one where he, like, grabs a guy in a sleeping bag and, like, swings it over his head and throws it into this bush and, like, impales him on some of the branches in the bush. Uh, there's one where, like, these two Girl Scouts see him and they both have, like, their pocket knives out. So he, like, grabs the girl's arms and has them, like, stab each other to death. Um, he's capable of picking up an axe and, like... Killing people with an axe. Which seems weird, because he's like an animal, right? But <laughs> he has no problem. Like, he'll rip people to shreds, but he'll also use weapons if there happens to be weapons nearby. Um, of course, the enduring image of this film is a biker who pulls over to the side of the road to take a piss and gets his penis ripped off. That fucking happens in this movie. So this was one of the video nasties in Britain. And most of the time when it's some cheap, poorly made, shot on video film, I'm like, why did you even bother banning this? What was the point? It's like, it's never that bad. And it's, it's a movie no one was probably going to watch anyway. Night of the Demon, on the other hand, I'm like, no. Nah. I, I get it. I get why this was banned. The understandable. <laughs> to to totally makes sense. I, I mean, I mean, guy getting his penis ripped off alone. Fine. Yeah, and then, you know, you get to the end of the movie and, like, the, the four living students all get killed all at once in one scene. That's not really a spoiler. You know they're dead by the beginning of the movie. That's just... The, the body count is, like, 13 or 14, but... But it's, it's always just, like, s stopping the plot dead. Not that there's that much of a plot, but, you know, they're out looking for Bigfoot, and then they'll be like, Did you know, right here, these people died? Flashback to those people getting killed. <laughs> it's... Kind of obnoxious, but also kind of insane. And there's so much more insane bullshit in here. I might get demonetized if I say it out loud. <laughs> well, a, a woman has a Bigfoot baby. Okay? That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying any more than that. A woman has a Bigfoot baby. Anyways, Night of the Demon. It's wild. If, you, if you're looking for a crazy fucking movie, this is ideal for, like... Putting on for some friends if your friends are crazy fucked up. If you have some crazy fucked up friends, perfect movie to put on for them. Because you will not pay attention to, like, half the movie. Like, 
so much boring nonsense going on. I, I read online somewhere there's, like, a version of the movie where they say fuck a lot and another cut where they don't say it as much. And the version on Amazon Prime, they don't say fuck, like, at all. And I'm wondering why... Why you would... Like, why would you cut out the swear words but leave in the scene of a guy getting his penis ripped off. Like, of all the things, it's like, ah, oh yeah, guy getting his penis ripped off, that's fine, but you better not use any naughty language. So, I sort of doubt the authenticity of the claim that there is a cut with more swear words in it. Maybe not. Maybe there is, but, like, it just seems weird that Amazon Prime would have all of the violence... All of the sexual stuff, but we're going to cut out the swearing. So, last week I asked you about your favorite movies that have, like, the same title as another movie. Um, I said my example was Kicking and Screaming, the Noah Baumbach film, which is an excellent movie. But I constantly have to go, not the Will Ferrell movie. Because there's a Will Ferrell comedy about soccer... That I have also seen, like, a substitute showed it in, like, high school. And <laughs> it's not a good movie. And I'm like, I don't mean that one. There's another one, and it's so much better. Why are there two movies like this? Why is why does this happen? Um, I could probably come up with a few other examples. I mean, last week I showed Dead or Alive, and I have to clarify... Not the video game movie Dead or Alive, the Takashi Miike film Dead or Alive. Uh, I also just watched Crash, the David Cronenberg movie, um, for the bisexual representation video I just put out. Um, specifically for that video, I watched Crash, and, you know, people get that confused with the one from 2005. Cause those, those aren't even that far apart, it's like nine year gap between those. I guess I guess there's probably only a nine year gap between the Will Ferrell kicking and screaming and the Noah Baumbach kicking and screaming too, but like two movies called Crash that close together. Um that said, I don't really mind the 2005 Crash. I know a lot of people are upset at it, but I think they're <sighs> mostly I think they're upset that it won Best Picture when clearly it should have been broke back mountain. Like, there's no reason... Why was it Crash and not Brokeback Mountain? It also has absolutely nothing to say about racism, despite being a movie about racism. It just says nothing. I don't think it has a bad message. I think it has no message. <laughs> and you could argue the fact that it has no message makes it a bad message, but... Basically, the point of the movie is racism exists. I knew that already, thanks. Anyways, uh, moving on. The only answer I got for this question, uh, Patrick Beyond the Toon Room more says, uh, Invasion USA with the uh, two original Lois Lane actresses from Adventures of Superman. It was on MST3K. And then there's also the Invasion USA with Chuck Norris. I'm not sure which one of these he likes. I'm I'm given to I think he likes the the older Invasion USA that was on uh, MST3K. And then there was the Chuck Norris one from like the '80s, which I think was supposed to be a remake. I I don't know if that counts because that is a remake and. It makes sense to clarify when you don't mean a shitty remake. I, I had, like, a several-minute-long argument with one of my friends once over whether or not Total Recall was a good movie. And then I'm, and I said something about Schwarzenegger, and he's like, Schwarzenegger's not in that movie. And I'm like, oh my god, you're talking about the remake. No, okay, the remake sucks. The Schwarzenegger Total Recall is good. I do th I think the uh, Chuck Norris Invasion USA was supposed to be a remake. Very loose remake but still a remake of the original Invasion USA. Uh, 
from the 50s, I want to say. I've seen both of them. I've seen the MST3K version, which he, he mentions, you know, Tom and Mike and Crow talking about it. Probably the older one is better. Um, the Chuck Norris one... God, they, they filmed... So there was this neighborhood that was going to get torn down, and Canon Films was like, Hey, can we just blow shit up in this neighborhood? And they're like, sure, blow shit up in this neighborhood. And then they were editing the film, and the film had this plot, and the characters had backstory and depth, and Canon Films was like, we need it to be an hour and a half, and we don't want any of that stupid plot stuff. Just cu cut that out. Just show the explosions. And as a result, that movie is like 90% action, and it's really boring. Bus Stop said, I watched this with no pants on. Which isn't an answer to the question, I, I just felt like sharing that one. Thanks, keep it up. My question this week is, what is your favorite film to be focused entirely on one musical group? Um, maybe also artist, maybe I should make, sh should throw artists in there, but I don't know, the transition from musician to movie stars is, is like, not that big, so I... C I could easily say, like, oh yeah, my favorite uh, movie that stars a musician, Men in Black. That'd be right. Or, you know, like any Mark Wahlberg movie. Boogie Nights. Boogie Nights is my favorite movie that stars a musician. Uh, maybe someone who didn't go on to be an actor. Um, like, like UHF with Weird Al. Great movie. One of my favorite movies, actually, UHF. But uh, let's let's focus on bands. Your favorite movie that was made by a band. Because it's Metalween, and we're showing some metal movies. I'm gonna film this. It might be too long. This is already one of the longest episodes, so I might cut this out and make a separate video of it. But we're gonna go over Matt's metal movie drinking game. And so, tonight, I will be showing Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny. We'll talk about it next time. There's a lot to say. S some people might not like that pick, but fuck it. Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny. Then we are going to watch the 80s horror film Incubus, which I think also goes by The Incubus. I've seen it under both titles. There's not a the here, but I'm pretty sure it is the Incubus. And we're going to end with Hellbent. And if that cover doesn't sell you on this movie, I don't know what will. Hellbent. So uh, watch those tonight, and we'll talk about them next time. Until then, happy Metalween.